Hey, we're here with John Ballantyne from John Ballantyne's Crazy Heart. They just performed a show at the Suburban Bourbon. And uh, John, welcome welcome to the Suburban Bourbon. We're glad to have you here. Uh, it's wonderful uh, to be back here. We have, we have been here before you um, did the, added the, the uh, auditorium or whatever you call that, where, wherever we mm-hmm. just played, that big room with all the speakers and stuff. Um, and you had described it to me, but it's it's actually better than your description. It's a wonderful venue. Um, and I know the, the whole band had a blast. We had a really good time today. So the last time you were here, the band was a little different, and that was several years ago. <laughs> um, what... How's when did the band start, and how's it how's it progressed to where you are now? Um, probably uh, in this uh, form, it, it's been together since about 2015. Uh, we were around at, just as a three piece before that, and that's where we met that ill fated night in in Racine. So we just played as a little three piece, and um, actually it was just uh, a for fun. Thing really, uh, just some guys uh, trying to have have a little fun on the weekends. But amazingly, people people, it turns out they kind of liked it. And then we we were able to add uh, different people have come and gone. But uh, tonight, for example, we had uh, six piece band. Uh, so we I play guitar, and lead vocal. I have uh, Heather Comer. Uh, who sings, uh, she takes a lead on some tunes, but she sings harmony most of the time with me. Uh, Gus Noble on bass, and Leslie Wall Santos uh, on drums. So Gus and Leslie were the original, in the original uh, Mm -hmm. three-piece. But we also had uh, a fellow called Mike Fleming playing uh, lead guitar, and uh, and Mike is just a wonderful guitar player, and uh, blessed to have... uh, him, him present with us tonight. And then we had uh, Jory, Jory, is it Jory or Yori? Uh, I still don't know. I've been told six, six times <laughs> tonight. Uh, let's say Jory uh, Simmons on pedal steel, who uh, is wonderful. I mean, he's like a really renowned pedal steel player, plays with a lot of different bands and is a very successful musician. So mm-hmm. it's a big thrill to have him uh, with us. Um, and uh, I, can, I can tell, like, we play a lot of different places with, with different outcomes and different vibes. And everybody, I, there was a lot of smiles. Everybody was very happy tonight. Yeah, I, I, saw, I saw a lot of smiles, too. I mean, the, you do a lot of, well, John Prine, Chris Christopherson. Yeah. Um, it's music that people don't hear often in live venues. Yeah, it's, uh, I always have difficulty, um, like, Trying to describe the band to people, um, say, what what do you play? And I, I I hesitate to say country, or it is. But when when I if I say country, people they, they now, think of, they think of big green tractors. They do, and and, and they think about the the modern country, the mm-hmm. product coming out of Nashville, which is fine. I'm, I'm glad people enjoy it, but we don't do that. We we're kind of. Um, uh, it's it's almost a nostalgia trip where we're doing some songs uh, like out of the 50s and mm-hmm. 60s and 70s, so maybe some part of the 80s, like Chris Christophers and John Prine, Merrill Haggard, um, George Jones, Waylon Jennings, uh, all of that kind of thing. We do Johnny Cash, which you probably noticed because mm-hmm. <laughs> I know we, we've talked about that before. And then, you know, we all... Uh, uh, right, we all contribute to our own uh, compositions, and uh, we we've only made one CD, but I I think uh, we're we're probably getting ready to do another one. We uh, we ac- actually had some success, but that was back in 2014 uh, when we did the tour in Scotland. Which yeah, I was going to ask you. You were supposed to come, weren't you? Uh, yeah, they they wouldn't let me on the plane. That was after 9/11, uh, and they found that long story. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, tell us. I mean, the band toured Scotland. That did mm-hmm. uh, you have Scottish roots? Strangely enough, yes. Uh, <laughs> so I was born in Scotland. Um, Gus Noble on bass, OBE. Gus Noble, OBE. I have to. Maybe some people don't know what that is, <laughs> but uh, in the UK, that is a. a uh, one of the highest awards for a service that, that can mm-hmm. be awarded. Uh, so Gus is, Gus is on base. He was also born in Scotland. <clears throat> um, in 2013, it must have been, we were uh, playing 
in Martyrs in downtown uh, Chicago. One of the, uh, it was a good music venue, and we were very lucky. We got to <coughs> open for a Celtic rock band that were over from Scotland called Scarivore. And they're uh, like big time, they're international, real, you know, professional touring musicians, <laughs> like the real deal. And uh, we, we were very lucky. We got on the bill with them, and we. We hit it off with them. We had, we had a great night, a great show, and a mm -hmm. great uh, kind of back and forth with them. And as we were leaving, the, the leader of their band, uh, Daniel Glasby, and I were talking, and he said, you know, we do this uh, festival, this music festival every year in July in Scotland, you should come and, and play. And I just laughed, you know, I said, yeah. yeah, right, uh, uh, sure, thanks, Daniel, you know. Uh, it's a very nice thing to say. You mm -hmm. know? Well, the next day I get the email, actually inviting oh, yeah. us to, to come and perform. Wonderful. And putting us in touch with uh, agents and, and other uh, venues and other events. So we were there for three weeks. And okay. We were all very nervous about it, <laughs> and uh, um, it turned out the, the p people absolutely loved it, and it was a, a memory that I will treasure. It was obviously me going back there. Um, I mean, Guts and I had played in bands, but mm -hmm. they were nothing like this kind of music, so we were quite unsure how this was going to be received. It was not, not exactly Scottish music, right? <laughs> um, Although it maybe originates in Scotland and Ireland, but you know, it's or, country music, like, we know what it is, but we're, right, so you didn't add a bagpipe to Merle Haggard. Um, <laughs> it, strangely enough, it's funny uh, you should say that, but we uh, have performed with a, a pipe. Okay, okay, <laughs> of, co of, of course you have. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we do the Highland Games, of course, in mm -hmm. Chicago every year, and one year we had a, a fellow in bagpipes. Uh, playing along with that. Okay, so I like it. Can be done. Well, you also put together a program, um, a con country program, where it took the, the, roots, the roots of country music from Scotland to Appalachia and then beyond. Is that yeah. pretty much how it worked? You um, performed that in Chicago? Yeah, actually, uh, it's back to that same connection with the, the festivals in Scotland. Um, I can't remember... The timing exactly, but again, I had a conversation with some with somebody in that uh, Celtic rock band, and we got to discussing how um, he, he expressed the, the, that he had always liked country music, and he said, "You know where it came from, right?" And I, I was thinking, well, you know, I suppose originally App Appalachia, I think we're supposed to say, is, "Well, yeah, but how did it get there, right?" And he explained to me that. You know the all of the, the the basics, the like the he's more of a technical musician. So like the the form of the music and the mu musical structure mm -hmm. is all based on Scottish and Irish folk songs and the fiddle and the the storytelling aspect of, okay. of the whole thing. Um, and that was the spark of an idea. I wrote a song. Um, about the migration of the, not just the music, but the, the culture of uh, Scotland and Ireland into mm -hmm. Appalachia. Uh, I think uh, some of the research I did, something like 95% of the people who settled in Appalachia were Scots oh, okay. or Irish. So they, okay. they, it's where there's no doubt. But that, I mean, of course, we, we can't, we would like to take all the credit, but, mm -hmm. but we can't. Of course, there were, there were many other influences, and as the music moved south and west, it kind of changed, and the United States gets, gets the, respon the responsibility, the, <laughs> the credit, <laughs> the credit for, for the development of the music, there's no question. Yeah. It's but, okay, it's okay to take off all the credit. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm Greek, and we you wouldn't have civilization if it wasn't for us. Oh, that's right. So. It was you. Well, you, do, you do know that that is generally thought to have been a bad move. Yeah, you know, well, you do understand. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm glad we're laughing. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, we hope you're. I mean, we we have to talk. We're going to book you at Great. Suburban Bourbon this fall. Okay. Looking forward to that. Um, do you have anything to say? It's your first time drinking li Liquid Death Mountain Water. 
Uh, yes, I haven't. You know, I was kind of nervous when when I was presented with this because I, I uh, they stopped me drinking almost 30 years ago. It was one of the one of the better ideas. That that turned out to be a really good move for society <laughs> and you know civilization. Uh, so I thought it was uh, alcoholic, and I was like, oh no, I I can't drink that. But it is um, a very interesting name for a beverage. Well, it will murder your thirst. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Thank you very much, Pete. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thanks, John. Always a pleasure. <laughs>